yeah, I'm back here, I guess, two odd years after Back to Bedlam came out. And, uh, and I am living in the same house. Um, I'm back in Los Angeles with the same producer um, in the same studio. I guess the difference is uh, the few miles under my feet at this stage. And, I, uh, and I'm kind of more comfortable, in a way, with songwriting. And I understand the recording process, um, which the first time around was all um, a bit new and strange to me. Uh, yeah, um, absolutely. I was totally ready to get back in the studio. I've toured uh, Back to Bedlam for two years. You know, Back to Bedlam's only ten songs. To tour for two years on ten songs is a long time. So also, I'd taken time off at home, written some more songs, um, and had a decent space of time to really un you know, understand those songs as they were, and, and then present them to my band and say, look, this is how we're going to do it. Um, as a songwriter, I, uh, I understand uh, and am more confident um, in in that process of writing uh, and, and kind of freer in many ways musically. I guess I have a confidence now that I can, that, I, that I've learned from working with other musicians along the way, from writing with other people along the way and from um, having recorded an album previously. Uh, and also I have the great bonus now of I've toured the band for, uh, for you know, a good period of time and those guys are amazing musicians um, and you can't help but pick up things from them. So, uh, so I've developed as a, as a player, as a performer, as a musician myself. So um, that, that kind of period of time of doing music day in and day out um, has been a great benefit and, and just again it's kind of released me for this album. Uh, Tom and I had an amazing experience really recording Back to Bed on the first time round. Not only was it great fun, uh, but it seemed to work and lots of people seemed to get the album. So the moment I started thinking about a second album, uh, the, the, the thought about who would produce it never came into it. So he's a great friend of mine and, uh, and he's a really special producer at the same time. He really understands uh, what it is to try and draw from a musician their musical expression. Uh, he doesn't try and force himself onto the album, he really just tries to capture the artist. Uh, and he came and saw me on the road, came and joined in, and he came out doing the writing process, came and hang out there. Uh, so he really was part of the whole thing. Um, although it has my name at the top, it's, it's very much uh, my band, myself and Tom Rothrock uh, who, who have constructed this and, and captured the moment. Uh, having toured for two years uh, with the last album, then uh, I had the same guys with me on the road uh, the entire time, and, and they're phenomenal musicians. They played some of the songs before, so it made complete sense to take them into the studio um, and, and record them this time around. During the recording process, I have, uh, of course, listened to this album um, probably more than anyone ever will, again and again, on a minute-by-minute -minute basis every single day, and I'm still excited by it, so it's doing okay. This album, I, uh, I've really just set out to have fun with music, to, uh, to enjoy the process, to capture the songs, these new songs as I've written them, um, in a way that I, that I um, feel happy with, that again documents it, um, with, without too much of an audience in mind, just a, a great uh, confidence in the musicians, in the songs and the recording process. Um, last time round, I uh, spent the days recording and at night I went out to all the clubs in Los Angeles. Um, this time around 
I work during the daytime and I've gone out every single night to the clubs in Los Angeles. Sadly, this time I get busted more because they're paparazzi outside and nowadays they photograph me. So my mother finds out every time. I, th I guess when I was doing my first album, we, the reason I wanted it to, s to sell a little bit in the first place was that hopefully then my record company would have a little bit of confidence in me and give me a bit of cash to come back in the studio and record a second album. Um, and I think Tom at the time said, you know, maybe if you sold 100,000 albums, that would be that moment that maybe they'd, sh maybe they'd just squeeze you into a studio then. Um, and I thought 100,000 seemed a lot of, uh, of people to go out and buy an album. But at some point we definitely passed that number. Uh, and I guess, yeah, then when, when, we, uh, when we hit a, f a few more than that, then I kind of felt pretty confident that, that I'm going to be allowed to carry on my job as a musician in a comfortable way um, and, and find myself in a, in a smart studio like this. About late summer 2006 and then going through the winter of 2007 was the first moment I'd had a bit of space to stop and think about what had happened um, and the impact and how life had changed and you know I was in a, in a new house in, in, the, in the sun um, with a view and a piano and, and it was a, you know a nice time to, to reflect on what had gone on and what had happened um, and, and the impact of that has definitely been huge having you know, the flat where I wrote the last album was above a dry cleaners on a, on a main road with lorries and buses going past. We could hardly hear what I was playing on the piano at the time. Um, so the silence for a start was a, was a good moment. But also, yeah, the uh, the impact has has, has been huge, and, and that has reflected on some of the songs. And of course, I think I think you could probably spot that through the songs, some of the some of the impact has has been really enjoyable. Um, definitely, I, I sense a celebration in some of these songs. And at the same time, there there is that kind of bewilderment at times about um, about how the world around has changed, or the way people perhaps look at um, me has changed. I wrote 1973 uh, with a guy called Mark Batson, who um, is a, a really great guy. We wrote in New York um, at Jimi, Jimi Hendrix's old studio. And, um, and Mark Batson is a, comes from a really different kind of background musically, uh, and he writes with Dre. He lives out here in Los Angeles. Uh, but we got together and messed around on, on a musical uh, level. And, uh, and I had some ideas about something that was more up-tempo, and I've been living out in a, in a Spanish island where there's lots of dance music in the first place, um, so I was, you know, feeling that kind of vibe. And then lyrically, um, it's a it's a kind of nostalgic moment about that great celebration of shared times, um, nights out on the town, and uh, 1973. I wasn't even alive then. Don't know why. It just must have rhymed or something. I would call you up every Saturday night, and we'd both stay out till the morning. And we sang Here we go again And though time goes by I will always be In a club with you In 1973 Singing Here we go again I would call you up Every Saturday night And we both stay
actually wrote I Really Want You um, a long time ago, uh, before I recorded Back to Bedlam. And I tried to record it, and we really just couldn't capture it at all. There was something about it that was, it just felt too much of a live song, and we, we just couldn't get the essence of it. That's really where Tom Rothrock comes into his own, because uh, he's a person who understands um, how to make us perform as if it is a live, a live setup, and he's the one who can capture that. Um, one of the brightest stars, uh, I guess, uh, yeah, you know, it reflects on uh, elements of stardom and uh, and doesn't necessarily sound entirely positive in in some aspects of it. Yeah, you know, it's just one one of those uh, moments, I guess, when when you start feeling the pressure a little bit and seeing again how people people's perception of um, of you or your maybe your public persona changes. I'll take everything as a great celebration of life and uh, mortality. Uh, and uh, for me, it, I really just wanted to make a song that captured the essence of being alive and that spark for a moment. And uh, the whole notion of life is that there is death at the same time and, and as such, it's a great celebration of the two. Um, yeah, I, uh, I arranged all the songs and, and as you say, give, uh, give Me Some Love is a more uh, complex arrangement. The, the great benefit of these guys that I've toured with in the band is that we really understand each other. So I can get in and, and although I don't necessarily play their instruments, um, like the drums or, or the bass particularly well, at least I have a real understanding of what it is that I'm after and I can turn around to these guys and describe it. And, uh, and we have such a close relationship on a musical level now that they really know what it is that I'm trying to express. Um, and very quickly, you know, I, I sit there and, uh, and describe it. It comes together. Um, and yeah, it's, as a result, it's a really fun song and it just is a chance to kind of free ourselves up and have fun. Uh, Max Martin called me up and said he had a song idea and that I needed to fly out and see him immediately. Um, which is a pretty good description of how Max Martin in is in the first place. He's uh, marginally psychotic, but, um, but great fun and very special. And so I said, okay. I'll, I'll come on out, and so I flew to see him in Sweden, and and he sat me down, and he sang me, uh, I think you know four lines of melody, um, and uh, a couple of lyrical ideas. Yeah, you know, at the time, I was uh, I was kind of a bit shocked that I'd flown out for these four lines, but uh, but very quickly I I, I could see exactly what he was on about. Um, uh, you know, uh, melodically I could see he was really onto something very special, um, and also his enthusiasm and his and his passion for what he does um, is is a great inspiration in itself. And it was a really good experience working with him. I haven't uh, I've had a few uh, songwriting experiences, but many of them have been with my regular mates, a guy called Jimmy Hogarth, who's worked on this album with me again, um, and a guy called Sasha Scarbeck. So to, to go and, and work with someone else who's, who, um, who I think just calls, you know, people aren't necessarily friends in, but calls other musicians such as myself in to come and work was, was a really new experience. Um, and, uh, and one I'm, I was very grateful for, and the result has, is a really uh, solid and strong song that, that really captures an, an essence in a moment. Same mistake I wrote uh, whilst on the road, um, and I can't remember exactly when. It was pretty early on, actually. So it, we've had a, we've been able to road test that for a long time now, and uh, and we knew it went down really well, so well in fact that we thought we'd probably stop playing it for a while just so so we didn't bore ourselves by overplaying it, and so that hopefully as well other people uh, didn't hear it too much, so that when we when we released it on this album, it would be new and fresh to us all. Um, and uh, again, having toured it, we were a bit nervous as to whether we'd be able to capture it in the studio, but, but I think we've done it, and it's a really exciting song. The thing about having a road-tested song is, although you know it's worked on the roads, the, uh, the sad thing or, or the nervous moment about that is you're wondering if you'll capture the spirit of, of the live performance in the studio. Um, and, uh, and, you know, it's always something you, a, a nervous moment because you don't quite know whether it'll just have to fall along the wayside um, or just stay as a live song. I had a huge benefit of, of road testing about five tracks while we, while we toured um, that, were, that weren't on the first album, there were possibilities to go on the second album. And yeah, that was a great moment really to, to have songs and really know that they were working and then feel confidence that with this band we can get in the studio and whack them down on tape. Um, and yeah, you know, I made a couple of tweaks along the way. That's, that was part of the process, but uh, I think you know, they're all 
in that same state that we started out with them on the whole. Um, there are a few characters who do uh, appear in the album and who uh, make reappearances from the last album, and, uh, and they're all real people. Um, the names aren't necessarily the same to protect the innocent, or the not so innocent as they may be. Um, although Billy knows who he is, he um, still owes me lots of money, but I think I've ruined his reputation enough that I probably owe him as a result. But yeah, they're, they're all about real life people. I, uh, I keep a really tight-knit group of friends uh, who have always been my friends long before I did music and they are um, uh, abusive to me on a daily basis in order to keep me grounded. Um, I think also I've probably come much closer to my parents in this time as well as I've, uh, as I've become more dependent on, on people I've known before I did music. Um, and, uh, and so yeah, within my whole family, my, my friends, the experience has definitely been to rely on them more and, and as a result has brought me closer to them. Over the last two years I've had the most incredible time. Um, I, uh, I put out an album which I really loved. Um, people really got into it in uh, an amazing way that I never expected at all and as a result I went on tour with, with a bunch of musicians who have uh, become very close family and we really had the time of our lives. For that I've been uh, uh, really fortunate. Along with that has definitely come some things that I didn't uh, didn't think I signed up for necessarily and didn't expect. Um, the notion of celebrity uh, was something that I uh, hadn't expected um, and don't really believe in and sadly we live in a time in, in the cult of celebrity where um, where celebrity is put on a pedestal and at the same time torn down um, in the same day and uh, and I think it's pretty unhealthy um, in, a, in, a, in a world where there are many more important things to be looking at when humans really should be treated as, as equals, no greater or, or any less than each other. Um, so yeah, definitely press attention, media attention, into uh, things that were irrelevant to, uh, to music. Those things, uh, I think, are destructive. Uh, but, but aside from those, yeah, I've, I've toured the world and I've met some incredible people along the way uh, um, and had a fantastic time on, on the basis of doing music. So for the job as a musician, I'm really grateful. Last year we went back to Kosovo uh, and that was some seven years after I'd been there in the war and it was a really amazing moment and I didn't really enjoy it that much either to go back to a place that had really terrible memories um, of a place of great violence and death and destruction. Uh, um, but I was with a good team who in a very short space of time, two days, really captured um, that, that experience and then I had my own video footage from when I was there in 1999 and uh, yeah, I think as, you know, as as a little uh, uh, piece goes, it's it's really really magical. I mean, I don't, I, it's not necessarily enjoyable, but it is magical in that it really does capture um, something of of what has gone on there and what goes on there now, um, and, and really captures, I think, what the, the people there who lived there uh, experienced at the time, and the fact that the the um, the consequences of violence uh, and uh, and this destruction, the consequences last forever, and, and I think you can definitely see the impact. Through um, our touring process, I started showing and screening the preview to a film called An Inconvenient Truth, which is Al Gore's movie about climate change and uh, global warming. So uh, then, uh, when he was setting up the Live Earth, concerts around the world and the one in, U uh, in the UK is at Wembley Stadium, um, his team got in touch with us and said that they'd seen we'd been interested in, in uh, and, and would we be involved in that and, and for us um, it made complete sense. I and mean, having uh, toured the world myself and seen how much humans have scarred this incredible planet um, and, and then to see the, the facts and the figures of the effects of that scarring um, is, is shocking really. You know, it's a moment and a time where we really need to galvanise people and point out what's going on around us um, and the priorities um, are, are on a massive global level um, that we all need to take action and responsibility for immediately. So, um, so yeah, to have that phone call and be asked to do that made great sense and it was nothing to do with um, the time with my album. It, you know, in fact, it's probably too early for that, but, uh, but yeah, of course, we definitely want to be involved.
What I definitely think about this is that I've made an album. It's not individual songs. It really is a body of work, a collection of work. I know iTunes sells uh, songs just individually, um, which I think is a pity in a way because you know uh, it's, it would be like selling just one chapter of a, of a book. Um, you really need to read the whole book. Uh, um, but uh, you know, but I think it's it's still out there, and it's it's a great way of making music readily accessible. Um, the digital world and, and online world is a massive feature in, uh, in, our, um, in the music industry at the moment and how music is made accessible to people. I definitely haven't thought about that too hard when I make uh, a song. I, you know, I just uh, record it as it should sound. Um, what I know is that it'll, it'll get out there um, via the internet and, uh, and I think that's really exciting. Um, I have a pretty current fans on a regular basis who are all over my website and I have my best mate whose name is Billy who runs that um, and there's no middle men in between um, me and my friends uh, who, who deal with that, who connect directly with the people um, who are my supporters musically and, uh, and so, so that, you know, as a great dialogue between him and them and, and I say he's very close to me so, so that's, that's our way of cutting out a kind of a corporation in between the two of us. Um, for me, there was absolutely no pressure whatsoever um, because I think, you know, having sold over 11 million albums, uh, the likelihood of doing that again is really minimal. You know, instead of uh, setting that as a target, I've set out to be, uh, to do and record something that I really enjoy, that I uh, am really happy with um, and, and look at it that if no one else hears it, I really don't mind. It's something that I want to hold up and say, yeah, this is something, a growth, it shows a growth and a development as a songwriter and as a musician um, and shows development in, in my own life. It records and documents my own life in that way. So um, it was a release in a way. Um, I, the pressure was almost off and I, I could just enjoy it. And 
though time goes by, I will always be in a club with you in 1973. Singing, here we go again. I would call you up every Saturday night, and we'd both stay out till the morning light, and we'll sign. Cheers. Take care, man. Oh, I can't see. Hmm? Or I think he can just move.